Let's check out this new 48 volt, 4,000 watt power inverter sent to me for review and let's see what's in the box. That is well packaged. This is a MWXNE 4,000 watt pure sine wave with remote control made in China. Wow, look at that packaging. That's impressive. Remote screen with a connecting wire. Got some inverter cables. MWXNE, pure sine wave power inverter, general user's manual. And it's a color manual, so that's kind of nice. Never seen packaging like this before, but it looks real nice. And in the bottom of the box, we have seven 10 amp fuses. Hopefully I don't need those. There's a ground wire and a remote control. There's no battery and it looks like it's a special size battery. I can't really tell for sure what size that is. Old school remote with an antenna on it and a guard for the button so you don't accidentally turn it on or off, I guess. Huh, interesting. 4,000 watt continuous power, 8,000 watts peak power. Input 48 volts, AC 110 volts at 60 hertz. So on the back of the inverter, we've got the DC positive and negative connections with some nice plastic caps to cover those up and a huge cooling fan here in the center. Looks like that's about a four and a half inch cooling fan. That's just massive. Let's look at the front. Okay, there's a lot going on on this inverter, more than any other inverter I've ever seen. So you've got a uh, connection here for a hard connection if you wanna hard wire this into a circuit box or uh, something like that. Line, neutral, and ground. And it has a plastic cover to keep you from getting shocked. And we've got a display screen here. We've got three USB-A outputs, a 24 watt and two 18 watts, and then a USB-C, which is 60 watts, on off button, a fault light and a power light, and then two AC, look like 15 amp outputs. That is really nice. Then in this bag, we've got the remote monitor, I guess, remote screen. You've got an on off button, 110 or 120 volt. So apparently you can choose either or and a button for a backlight, some holes in the corner for mounting. And then what appears to be a pretty long cable. And this is kind of like a old school hardwired phone line and a connection here for the remote. Well, scanning through the uh, instruction booklet here and it says soft start technology designed to protect the equipment from supplying too much AC power all at the same time. And then it has six protections listed here. Over temp protection, short circuit protection, lower over voltage protection, overload protection, battery low over voltage protection, and reverse polarity protection. Let's get some dimensions on this. It shows 20 inches from the farthest right hand to the farthest left and that's a, that's about right the box itself is about 18 inches stands about five and a half inches tall and depth wise is about eight inches and it's just under 20 pounds underneath one of these pieces of foam I found a wrench looks like a 17 and a 14 millimeter wrench that actually comes with the inverter so if you get one of these, don't forget to look underneath the foam. <laughs> it's probably in the box somewhere. I've decided to use my own cables because I have this shunt in line on these cables. And these are uh, four gauge and we'll use these to test out this inverter. This is actually the Finerci oscilloscope. I purchased it not too long ago. And so far, I really like the Finerci equipment. And let's check the output of this inverter and see if it actually is a pure sine wave. And it is. Let's have a look at this remote screen. So right now you can't power it on. I believe you have to have the inverter on. 
You've got the battery voltage up here in the left hand corner, 52 volts. Output, 122 volts. No power going out of it at the moment, but it'll show you watts on output. 21 degrees Celsius. And then this is kind of a battery meter or indicator of how much battery power you have. You can turn the backlight on and off with the right hand button. And then these other two buttons, you need to hold them down for three to five seconds for them to actually take effect. So say you wanted to turn it off, hold the power button, and it turns off. Press the button again and it'll turn the inverter back on. And now it has uh, 122 volts of output. If you have a fault, it'll show it down here what it is. And then this will be like a sad face sun. <laughs> okay, let's try this 110 to 120. Right now we're putting out 122 volts. We'll hold that down for a couple seconds. F13. Well, it shows F13 is data read error. So we want to restart the power. We'll turn it off, turn it back on, then we should be back to 110 volts of output. That's how that works. I'm going to leave it on 120 volts of output. So if you're trying to switch back and forth for, I don't know what reason you'd want to, but you'd have to be able to locate the on off switch as well as the screen in order to switch between the voltages. And then of course you just have the, the backlight. But I'm just going to plug my phone in. We'll check all these sockets and see if they're working. And if they are, you'll see this 99 light up and it'll give us a thunderbolt icon up there. So well, that one works. That one also works. That one works as well. Then I have an adapter for this USB-C plug and it does as well. So all the sockets do work. And the manual also said that this ground cable will connect to this center terminal on the bottom here for an earth ground or a chassis ground if you're using this in an RV or something. So I wanted to check the current draw of the inverter in standby. It's currently pulling 1.57 watts on the left hand side of the meter there. This meter draws a little bit of power just to keep the screen lit up. We'll turn the unit on. And I notice this bounces between seven or eight watts and then it'll shoot up to about 45 watts. There we go, 54 watts and then back down to seven. I think it has a seek feature, sends out a little bit of power looking for a load and if it doesn't detect when it goes back down to the seven or eight watts of standby power consumption. At least that's the way I understand it. Okay, I've got quite the setup here to try to put a good load test on this MWXNE 4000 watt 48 volt pure sine wave inverter. We've got the inverter. I've got some four gauge cables going to an Ography battery. This is a 48 volt 100 amp hour battery. It's about 50% charge at the moment. I've got this light fixture set up. This pulls about 690 watts. I've got the induction cooktop. I think I can get that up to about 1300 watts. And then I've got this portable 8,000 BTU air conditioner unit, and that's going to get us up about 1,400 watts. So everything all combined, I think I can get us up around 3,500 watts or so. I won't be able to max out the uh, inverter, but that's fine. I just want to put it through a test here and see how it does. To start with, let's go ahead and we'll turn this air conditioner unit on. We'll get that going, even though it's winter time. Go up here to AC. We'll put it on high. We'll just go down to as low as it'll go, 61. Just kicked on. I don't know if the compressor is running yet. I don't think it is. Let's go look at the meter and see what's showing so far. So that's 810 watts. We'll plug the induction cooktop into the top, and then I'll plug my light kit into that power strip as well. Hopefully it'll run both of them without tripping the breaker on that power strip. 
Okay, the AC is kicked on. We're just over a thousand watts at the moment. Now that'll fluctuate with that air conditioner unit, but between a thousand and fourteen hundred watts. All right, we're up to eleven hundred watts on the app with the AC unit. Let's plug in this light set and see if it stays on. This is going to be at about another six hundred and ninety watts or so. It's going to bring us up to eighteen hundred watts on the app there. And let's turn this induction cooktop on. We'll start at 600 watts. The fan just kicked on on the inverter. I can hear it, but it's not too awful bad. All right, that takes us up to 2600 watts and 50 amps of current coming out of the battery. All right, we'll bump it up to 900 watts on the induction cooktop. That's got us just about 3,000 watts. Let's see how we're doing on cable temperatures. Well, that air blows a lot of air through this inverter, which is really nice. All right, we're going up to max sear, 1,300 watts. That's 3,400 watts on the app there, and it's just running right along. The battery voltage is down to 50.2. That's a strong battery. I'll leave links for all this stuff if you want to go check it out. But uh, I really like those 51.2 volt golf cart batteries for uh, off-grid power bank. They can really pump out the power. 122 volts, 3,100 watts on the uh, screen of the inverter. And the battery app is showing 70 amps. That's about the limit on those four gauge cables that I've got. And we're not even to the limit of the uh, inverter yet, which is 4,000. We're at 3,524. Starting to get some bubbles in the pan here on the induction cooktop. I'm going to move those lights down here on this chair just to get them out of the way because it's really messing up my lighting. So there you go. MWXNE 4000 watt 48 volt pure sine wave inverter cranking out 3550 watts at 70.1 amps. So if you need a lot of power and an inverter that can tow the line for this kind of a setup without having massive cables like a 12 or 24 volt system, you can run this all on four gauge cables, which is really nice. And that's one of the big benefits of a 48 volt system. If you need any information on any of these products, I'll link them all in the description so you can go check that out. And if you'd like to see another video, click the video on the screen now and I'll meet you over there.